Welcome to Las Vegas and Big 12 Media Days 2024. KSO Showtime, Mason Both, Drew Galloway here with you. Recapping day number one, where again, we were treated to K-State getting to go first. That I like K-State being able to go first. That's always a, a benefit to it. Uh, keeps the energy high throughout the day. And I really think that with what we kind of saw today from, from K-State, um, everybody seems to have a, a common focus and goal and, and not just in like a generic way, but I mean, we were talking and you were trying to come up with different things that we learned today and whatever else came about. And you're like, well, it's tough to find that many things. Like, I think you were looking for five, six, whatever. And like, I don't know, I really can only get to this number. And I think it's because the team was so in sync where yes. it wasn't guys just searching to find answers to have an answer to a question. It was guys that, I know the answer to this question, and it was there was a lot of common answers there, and I think that is a really good sign to start things off for K State. Yeah, I think that's a good sign because nobody was really searching for finding an answer. Nobody was trying to like come up with the words to just like kind of get a question out of the way because I think that that's something that you see at this event where you know this is tough on us, but the players have it worse because they have to answer the same question over and over and over. But it, it wasn't something where they were trying to find an answer. It was everybody was really in sync. And I think that that is a good thing because it shows kind of what the program is about and kind of like the, the culture surrounding the entire program where everyone is very in sync and everybody is very focused. And I think that we saw a very focused uh, K-State team today. And I mean, I think that that's, that's something that's really noteworthy because, you know, it's July 9th. And there could be a lot of different things that people could talk about, but everybody was really on the same page. And I think that we saw a lot of composure, especially from a lot of guys where I, I believe that this was all of their first times at this event. What was what was the number one thing that stood out to you today about what we saw? I think that the my number one thing is probably, and it's always one of the fun questions that people get asked at something like this, where it's younger players standing out because it's something that we kind of hear about a little bit. But if you get to hear it again on Big 12 Media Day, it's really fun. Uh, Trace Spivey was somebody that was mentioned multiple times. Sterling Lockett was mentioned multiple times. And I think that's two guys that I think K-State it could really benefit from seeing uh, another step from them, especially Trace Spivey, because he's a receiver that just looks different and has looked different in a K-State uniform since he's stepped onto the field. So if he can take that next step and be able to play more, that's a good thing. Uh, Chidi Obi Eiser was another name that was constantly mentioned. That he's a, a name that has kind of been mentioned a lot. So I think that hearing the younger players standing out is something to really note. Well, I, I think Sterling Lockett was the one that people are probably the most excited about because there's obviously the locket legacy and everything that goes with that. So to hear him actually be brought up by Avery Johnson, by Chris Kleiman, uh, that I think that was another one of those things where it was common names that we heard with guys that, Hey, who's standing out as opposed to, you know, sometimes Chris Kleiman, like any coach can give you the coach speak of, I'm going to list every single offensive player I have to be like, yeah, this guy's coming along. I'm not going to leave anybody out. But today it felt very focused and refined for what they were looking for and, and what they were doing. Now, we got to talk to all five players that were here for K-State. And so if you want to watch those interviews in their entirety, go to the KSO YouTube page. We have all of them up there, except for Brendan Mott. That one will come later in the week. We got enough coming for you. We also got to talk to Gene Taylor today. We talked to Gene for like 20 minutes, got really good stuff and information from him. Uh, but let's start with with talking about Avery. What stood out to you about our conversations with Avery Johnson today? I, I think that it was how focused and ready to go Avery Johnson is. I think this is an event, again, like where a younger player can really kind of feel overwhelmed. But Avery Johnson, very comfortable in his own skin, very ready to go and ready to play. I mean, you even brought up a question about what is it like to be the the next quarterback mm -hmm. in this 15 straight against uh, 15 straight wins against Kansas? And he said that he's focused on UT Martin. And when the KU game gets there, that's when he'll focus on KU. But I, I think that that's an, a one thing. And then the second thing that I think that I would really point out is, again, we heard that Avery Johnson wants to really improve on his passing, and that's something that he's really been working on because I think that he is a little bit annoyed and tired of just being labeled as a runner. Yeah, I, I think that's what drives it more than anything. I don't think, like, Avery Johnson is not a bad passer of the football, but he wants to be so good at it to where people recognize that 
he's just as good at throwing the ball as he is running the football. He, I think that drives him quite a bit. He wants to be known more, I think, as a thrower that can run yes. instead of a runner that can throw. Yes, exactly. So that was all interesting. Uh, obviously, the EA Sports College football stuff was a heavy topic of conversation today. Every person we talked to kind of gave us something different yes. with it. Uh, we even got <laughs> some answers from Chris Kleiman and Gene Taylor about it. Uh, because of that, and, and we'll have some highlights from day one here in a little bit um, with a montage. Not everything, some of the guys you won't see, but there's good stuff all bound with them. Uh, but what stood out to you on that front? Because I know people are excited and, and looking forward to that. I think the thing that really stood out to me with that is how into it the players are. Like, you know, like you always have a, an idea of how into it the players are because of like what they post on social media and everything but i think that this is truly like a dream come true for a lot of them brendan mott specifically said that like he got to play the game today with avery johnson and said that this was like his younger self like would have freaked out knowing that he could play as himself in the video game uh the other thing that i think really stood out to me and it was something that we've been kind of talking about a lot was what uniforms k-state's gonna have the all whites in the game that that's enough, that's good enough for me. And I would also say with Brennan Mott, I, I, we asked him about, hey, wh what do you think of the compensation model that you guys are getting? And he basically told us, he's like, I think a lot of guys would have still just gone out and bought the games themselves if you said that they were going to be in the game because of how bad they wanted it. So that was all really interesting to hear. Um, I, honestly, I thought this was the best in terms of totality of everybody that was here, I thought this was the best Big 12 media days that I've been at from start to finish with everybody. And I've, I've been to everyone since 2019, I believe, and except for last year. But every single guy came and, you know, some guys you can peg and say, yeah, they're not great with the media. They're either shy or whatever. I thought every single player we talked to today had something of really good substance, worth listening to. And they all just seemed really comfortable and confident. And I think that, yes, there's an element to it's just talking to people, but that can be nerve wracking for some. But I think that the confidence that they have for their football team translated into how they performed at Big 12 Media Days today, because it is a performance and it's a grind. Like Avery Johnson was having to grind really, really hard today. Yes. Uh, by the time that he sat down with us, like everybody was trying to pull him one way or the other. Chris Kleiman, a very popular guy. But they did it, and they all did a, a really good job, I think. Yeah, I would agree. I would say that it was pretty similar, I think, to 2022 from the perspective of the confidence in how K-State players really kind of presented themselves, which I, I think kind of obviously bodes well if it plays out the way that the 2022 season did. But I, I think that they were all very confident in their own skin, very confident in the team. And I think that they are very focused. I mean, it, it sounded like even though it had happened – a while ago at this point that I think that they're still pretty upset about how the Iowa State game went and how they're really using that as motivation for this upcoming season. And I, I asked, I mean, about us with the defensive players specifically about uh, the Iowa State game. And then can you use the NC State game as kind of that springboard? And that kind of sounds like that's all that they, they've been preaching about the entire offseason as a defense. Yeah. Um, YouTube, for some reason, just being a total do for us in here uh, so you know some of you may not have seen the first little part of this because uh this is, a, this is a gripe for the for the big 12 and everything but the internet connection sometimes or the internet is not great. general wi-fi here give us uh give us something more to mark davis get. and jerry jones both cheap yeah which i guess people would maybe really start to to kind of think about but some some good stuff and notable stuff today and if you you miss anything we just said we'll have the full show up here in a little bit. Now, I, I guess the other thing that we'll bring up is we talked a lot about the offense in terms of the, the weapons and the type of players. We, we mentioned a little bit Spivey and Lockett, in addition to the guys that are already returning. Uh, Dante Cephas even got a shout out. Uh, I think that was Marquis Siegel that told us yes. that Dante Cephas was a guy uh, that they, they were having to really try to work to figure out because he was new and, and doing some things to hurt him. Um, but offensively, a lot of different guys there in the fold, but that's another spot where they seem, even with all the turnover, new offensive line for the most part in terms of starters, new offensive coordinators, Matt Wells, everything, they seem really confident about what the offense can do. Yeah, it's it's a lot of new faces, but I think that one of the things that yeah, Hadley Panzer talked about was just because there's a lot of new faces doesn't mean that there isn't a lack of talent. 
or that they don't have a lot of experience coming in because Carver Will has started a handful of games. Hadley Panther has started a lot of games at this point. Taylor Cotier has started a few games at this point. And Ethan Kilty brings a lot of experience, albeit at the FCS level. But on the offensive line, they have a lot of game experience already. So I think that you kind of saw that. And the word that kind of got used at the end uh, for Avery Johnson and Brennan Mott was dynamic when describing the offense. And I think that that is a little bit more to do with the dudes on this offense compared to last season, probably. But I think that some of it is also scheme and scheming guys open and trying to be more dynamic that way. So I think that we're, we're kind of in for... I'm really intrigued to see how the offense looks, uh, not just in the UT Martin game, but even in the Tulane game as they ramp up for the Arizona game. Yes, and the focus is on UT Martin. No, nobody else. Uh, yes, that was the. I think that was the the one dodge question of the day uh, where Avery Johnson did not want to hear me talking about, uh, you know, all consecutive wins over KU. Now he's got to kind of carry that mantle going forward and, and if there's any pressure with that. But he handled a lot of things well, as did everybody. So I guess uh, we'll, we'll jump in here and uh, we'll just fire away with uh, kind of some of the highlights from day number one. And I I don't know about you, but I, I thought that we got a pretty good look at a lot of different guys today and their personality. And, and I, again, confidence is the theme. We started by saying it, but for those that didn't see it, like – this just seems like an in-sync group that has loads of confidence going into the 2024 season. Yeah, I think that this is kind of like the pinnacle of what K-State's culture is right now. The confidence, the swagger. They, It's a quiet confidence, but also like if you ask them certain stuff that you can see kind of their eyes light up and have that little swagger going on. So I think that it's just where K-State's culture is right now is that they have a bunch of confidence because they know that they can win 9, 10, 11, 12 games this season. Yeah, absolutely. All right. Here is uh, some of the day one highlights from Big 12 Media Days with K-State. Ready to go into your first full year as a starting quarterback at K-State. How different is that feeling for you, and how do you have to prepare differently, or is it all just kind of the same? Because I'll steal a line from your head coach, football is football. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's a great quote right there. Football is football. It is a def definitely a different feel. Um, but not a different approach. Definitely feel like I have more eyes on me. Uh, a lot of people looking at me because I'm. I had to take a different leadership role this year. But as far as preparation, I mean, like the work work is the work. I'm going to continue to work hard and then just let the let the games just kind of come as as is. Oh yeah, I'll definitely. That won't be the last time that that gets brought <laughs> up. Uh, so it was it was fun. Me versus him wasn't a very. Uh, like fun game to watch. I won eight zero and I scored with like a minute left when they played half a half a game. It feels but. like a Courtney Messingham offense. Yeah. So we can't see our rating yet. Okay. Because if we leak our if we saw our ratings and we leaked our ratings, then um, people lose jobs, I guess. Mm. So we just went in and played, and I, I mean I I think I can tell you that the bill looked really realistic. Um, like it was pretty much to a T. They got the it's good for a wildcat first down. They got the cat, like roar, everything. The jerseys they got all our alternate jerseys, all stuff like that. One of the biggest topics in college football right now. Uh, will you be playing the EA Sports college football game, or have you gotten to any looks at that or any insight? No, on and here's why: because back look? in the day when it was still around, and my son played, and he was about six years old and kicked my butt, I decided I wasn't very good then. I'm probably not going to be very good now, so I'll just watch people play and and go. You know, I wish I could play that game. Okay, then the other one that I have for you that is definitely not a serious question at all is uh, obviously you can see that the EA Sports college football game is a big deal. I'm sure it's a big deal to a lot of your players. How big of a deal is it to you? I did not know that it was going to be out here until the guys were talking about it on the plane out here. I'm interested to see it because um, I haven't seen the college version for how many years, right? So um, I know our guys are excited about it. I'm interested to, to take a look at it. I probably won't be playing it a whole lot, but I'm interested to watch over somebody's shoulder for a little bit. I was going to say, I, I imagine your kids played it growing they up. They did all the time. You bet, all the time. Did you ever get in on it? Never did. I never did. Well, maybe we need to get you a PlayStation or something. And No, I won't have enough And time then you for can that. really get into it because, you know, <laughs> some of the guys, like, I know this is big in, like, Major League Baseball, but they'll use the video game, especially pitchers, to, like, simulate going against it. guys so maybe you just get i believe it. you hire somebody to make it really detailed yep. and you know okay we're you know we're starting off we're gonna see arizona you got somebody putting all of arizona stuff yep. in there and you can just 
get a couple hours in. It'll probably come to that pretty soon. You're right. He's grown a bunch. I love Coach Wells and um, everything he's about. He's really down to earth person. His, his office door is always open. I can go in there whenever I need to. And just being able to talk ball and kind of chop it up with him. Uh, what has stood out to you about the way the offense may be different from last year versus this year? I feel like it's going to be different, but it's going to be similar in a lot of ways. Obviously, like you said, like new OC, we have a co co coordinator, a lot of guys, a lot of different heads um, putting together that that play sheet. But I mean, we got added Dylan to the mix. DJ is like DJ's DJ man. He doesn't get a lot of respect. Um, he's ready to put the the nation on notice this year. So I mean, we got a lot of new faces, a lot of great great talent, a lot of underrated talent at receiver. And then I'm really excited for this offensive line. Like. It's a new bunch, but it's not a young bunch. It's a lot of people that, that have played college football before, and we have great leadership. I am a horrible golfer. I need My clubs are short. I need new clubs. Um, I need to get fitted for clubs. Yeah, we've worked the in-helmet communication all through the spring, so we feel comfortable with that. We've got to continue to work on it. The tablets we have not had a chance to even get our hands on, so not quite sure on that one yet. That'll be a work in progress in August. It's really cool. I'm, I, I used to be a Vegas guy all the time, and so being in and out here in a day, it really doesn't matter, but if I was going to stay a couple nights, it would probably be better to do it. I feel like aside from the guys that played a lot last year, it's Sterling Lockett had a really good spring, and Trace Bivey had a really good spring. Those guys, Sterling did a really good job um, in the slot this spring. And I feel like he's going to have a pretty good fall. And then Trey Spivey was showing up on a whole bunch of explosive plays. I, I watched Adrian Martinez wear the long sleeves. And I was told the sleeves were going to be shorter than that. Like Lamar Jackson, Kyler Murray, such. Just looser, but not like Peyton Manning loose. And then the jerseys came in. We just kind of had a roll with it. But whenever I switched numbers and they had to like get the new jersey, I was like, don't put the long sleeves on it because I didn't like the way it looked. I thought it was an ugly look to it. Expansion now is coming this year, 12 teams. And I, you know, you've seen various projections and stuff out there that it's only the Big 12 champ gets in or gets left out. Are, are, do you and the other ADs in this league share any concern that there will be that bias or that squeeze out of non-SEC or Big 10 schools? And how do you guys fight to make sure people recognize there's more than one good team in this league? Yeah, and I think, you know, I, I'll give you an example of when, you know, both us and TC were in that championship game, right? Um, obviously, everybody felt that if TC won that game, excuse me, <clears throat> if TC won that game, they were getting in the Final Four. There was a lot of conversation about Kansas State. Not the fact we were going to be good enough to be in the Final Four, but we were a good football team. And now, I wasn't in the room, but I felt that when I came back in the room, that people were like, well, you, got, <laughs> you guys were talked about. When you get to play that what are that 13th game right and you've earned the fact of getting a champ game that carries a lot of weight with the committee and so they're going to look and say okay they just lost let's say you know a team lost in the big 12 championship and yet this team didn't even play a championship uh i'm going to give more weight to the team that earned that spot now if they got in there and they were six and five that's gonna be a little different story but if they get in there with a record that we're talking about um, because at the end of the day, the committee wants the best field of, of, of teams, and they don't. We don't look. I literally, when I'm at the end of the day and I'm looking at the screen, I don't really look at the teams and go, "Okay, we've got." Eventually, yeah, you do. Like, okay, I got this many SEC, but you're going, "Okay, do, do I really believe the tenth team is better than the eleventh team or the twelfth team?" I'm like, you know, I'm not sure, and I go back and revote and rethink about it. And that's all I worry about. I don't worry about there is no logo of what that conference is. And if you make it to a champ game, and that's that another data point, and you uh, 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 record-wise deserve to be in there, you're going to get in there. All right, we are uh, back and uh, here in Allegiant Stadium, Las Vegas. Time of our lives, Drew. This you'll never have a better time than you are right now. To be honest, kind of forgot that it was Allegiant Stadium. Yeah, well, we are probably uh, like 30 feet away from maybe a little more than that, maybe like 40, 50 feet away from where the Chiefs won the Super Bowl in overtime this year. Yeah. Uh, if my 
math is correct on the way the field is laid out. Uh, this is it's not the real field down. This is a an artificial turf field that's down currently uh, that has a lot of flaws in it. But it you know would be great for people coming in for a tour. All right, we we just got to show kind of the highlights from the day and and everything else. Uh, what was the number one thing that stood out to you or that you enjoyed from day one of Big Twelve Media Days? I think it was just seeing everybody's personality more because I think that we're kind of seeing this K State team kind of grow up before our eyes. So kind of seeing everyone's personality, there was a lot of jokes. There was a lot of really funny answers to the the not serious questions. Uh Avery Johnson's golf answer I think was one of my favorite answers of the entire day. <laughs> Yeah, we got a lot, a lot of golf information today. Avery, Chris Kleiman, Gene Taylor. Uh, Gene Taylor basically uh, kind of seems like he just said that every coach he's hired at K State is better at golf than him. That's kind of the 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 answer that he gave, um, and and basically went on to say that Jordan, their the women's tennis coach, might be the best one. Which I I have heard he is a a pretty avid golfer. Uh, so we got a lot of good information there, and the full Gene Taylor interview because. It's not just him talking about the playoff committee, which I thought was fascinating because he spent three years on the committee, so he's got insight on how it works. He doesn't seem to lack confidence that the committee is going to treat the Big 12 and ACC unfairly moving forward, that there's not going to be this major Big 10 SEC bias where, you know, hey, only one team from the Big 12 is getting in. He doesn't seem to think that. But he also gave us some good stuff on all the other sports at K-State and in the Big 12. Uh, gave some insight into the basketball situation and and mainly 20 games, talked different TV windows. So that uh, 20 minutes with Gene Taylor will be up tomorrow morning for everybody to watch in its entirety. But uh, for now, everybody can go through and uh, can go and watch all of the, the players from today. Then we'll have Brendan Mott later on in the week uh, give his full interview. But really, there wasn't a bad showing at all from any of these guys. So uh, we'll, uh, we'll call in our relief pitcher. <laughs> Derek Young. to the bullpen. Yep, call, Chevy call to the bullpen. Uh, hopefully, this is going to be like Joaquin Soria 1.0, and not Will Smith first two weeks of the season. Uh, but we'll see. We'll see how it goes. I'm also getting reports that it's uh, 118 degrees outside right now. So, oh yeah, that doesn't surprise me. Uh, uh, is the mic on? There we, yeah, no, there we go. Now say that again because Drew turned the mic off on you. You weren't ready for that curveball. I said I am more, well, I don't throw curveballs. I'm Rolda Chapman. <laughs> True. I throw heat. Yeah. Just 104 fastballs and splitters, seeing what you can do. You're good now. You don't worry. Don't, I just saw you were looking for the light. Don't worry. You're good. Okay. All right. Uh, you were, I don't know, separated from Drew and I all day. You kind of just let uh, us on our own. You had your own stuff going on. You wrote, numerous great things from today i haven't read it yet because it just got published but i just believe uh what stood out to you about the conversations that you had with different people here at big 12 media days or uh, anything else you heard like mike gundy star of the show today just quote monster i the big 12 would be lost without that that darling yeah texas and oklahoma who exactly yeah who needs them avery johnson mike gundy great hair Everybody wanted to hear from today for totally different reasons. Yeah, I would kind of go towards, you know, obviously, Avery Johnson probably stole the show in, in many ways. But, you know, some takeaways that I had wrote about a few of them, obviously, would be, you know, kind of a desire or, a you know, a passion, an interest in wanting to prove people wrong through the air. I think Avery wants to be seen as a quarterback that can throw. You guys touched on that. But even Chris Kleiman has kind of said just the way that he talks makes you think that they were not thrilled with their passing game last year and want to take steps forward. Um, do you just get better at it going from Will Howard to Avery Johnson? Maybe. Uh, we'll see. Uh, I think that there's certainly potential that he just makes it better because he's Avery Johnson. But I, I think uh, that they're going to use some ideas that they're going to get probably from both Connor Riley and Matt Wells to kind of uplift the passing game. I, I just think that, you know, it just did not sound like it was anywhere what they wanted it to be last year. So that comes to mind. Um, 
in general, I, I would think a lot of the Big 12 perception was a conversation today. Uh, you guys touched on that when it comes to the playoff. Do you get left out? Do you, do you not? So, yeah. D- can you maintain your reputation and prestige without Texas and Oklahoma? Honestly, probably not. But you got to save face as much as you can. And some of that is through the marketing that you see with the Big 12 now and, and stuff like that. But some of it's got to be performance. You got to get better. Uh, it's going to be a fun conference to watch because of the parody, but there's also a parody because you don't have a top dog or two at the same time. Yeah, I think there's just there's a lot of good that comes with the way the Big 12 is is set up right now, and you kind of felt that today where I just think it was, it was a more fun vibe this year because realignment is in the past. You're at 16 teams. You have all these newcomers, and it feels like there's – we know, we know that there's some level of even footing here in the Big 12 now for everybody, uh, and you don't have OU in Texas. But there's also the negative that comes with that where you don't have OU in Texas, so maybe you're not as much of a uh, big draw to others, and you are going to have to fight perception problems in terms of your talent level. So that'll be kind of interesting to watch and see how it ends up playing out moving forward. And, you know, you brought up trying to prove people wrong. That was something Marquis Siegel talked about with Drew and I. Not only his individual performance. That I was thinking. Yeah. A lot. It's funny because yep. I didn't tell any of them when they brought it up because I think Austin Moore brought it up. I think Marquis Siegel brought it up. I think Chris Kleiman brought it up. And I wanted to say, like, and obviously I was, you know, when I was talking, it was with John Kurtz and we were doing the three mile shows. I wanted to say, on KSO, we talk about it almost every show. Uh, you talk about it a lot. Not intentionally. It's yeah. just like, oh, yeah, that Iowa State game. Which is a shame because <laughs> I would love to forget that game, uh, as would many others. But, yeah. They had two stingers like that, Iowa State and Oklahoma. Oh, uh, for defensively, it was Iowa State. Yeah. Offensively, it was Oklahoma State. Yeah. Yep. And I, we, there was kind of the duality of it, too, because, I mean, Drew would ask him a lot about, you know, the, there was a lot of good that came from the Pop-Tarts Bowl. So it was, you know, in that month stretch they had, the pairing of the Iowa State game, which was a driving force because it was so bad, but then the Pop-Tarts Bowl, which was a driving force because they felt like there was a lot of things that went well and it was kind of setting up for what was coming next. But uh, I think that this team just – they're in a really good place. Momentum seems good, and I think that's one of those things that you need for a team that – not completely young, but you're young in some spots. You're definitely inexperienced in terms of – starting uh with what you you bring back so you need guys to have a little extra juice from elsewhere and feeling good and i think this team has that and as we saw today with guys that were here like austin moore um and hadley panzers now has been around for a while and brendan mott you have guys that were on that big 12 championship team that they know how to shepherd this team forward to get them to hey talent is there maybe they need some more mentorship but I think they have the right voices to make it happen despite questions about, you know, the inexperience that might come with this team. Yeah. I had uh Hadley Panther kind of share his evolution because he's kind of an interesting football player in terms of his path and how he's gotten here. Because I, you know, we talked to this on three mile. I don't know when that's going to come out. You'll probably actually hear it here first now, but he is probably, cause I don't think this is going to get used again the last player to get gray shirted. Um, so he was actually a gray shirt and the last one to do so. And I don't know that that's something that's going to necessarily need to be utilized again. So it might be in the closet forever. But the funny thing is, and it was also as the COVID stuff was going on. So it was just a complete disaster. But he went from a gray shirt to not even red shirting because then he yeah. played nine games his first year on campus. So that's an interesting thing. I asked Chris Kleiman, I was like, obviously, I know there's more than one thing you need to address on your football team. Um, everyone's got more than one or two problems right now. I, we say problems, but things ju- just need to be improved on. I was like, which ones do, are you like eager to attack the most? And he just gave basically a position group on each side of the ball. He said offensively, offensive line, uh, need to develop more depth. Uh, excuse me. And defensively, he said linebacker. Yeah. And he's like, I, I don't know that we have bad depth. He says, but I know we always get injured at linebacker. Yeah, yeah, that was brought up. And also just kind of talked about in general with the – it feels like we repeated this a lot early on in the offseason and some other spots uh, last season where we know that there is depth on this roster, but we don't know where exactly it comes from. And it feels like 
K-State showed up today with a lot more answers on. They know where their starters and the depth is coming from. They're getting smaller and smaller with the amount of places that they need to get things figured out. And uh, I, I think linebacker is, ser- is probably the number one question mark going into the season still. But, yeah, but if, as long as you stay healthy, you're going to feel like you have a chance. I will say this. Uh, you know what you got in Austin Moore. You know what you got in Desmond Purnell. Um, can Rex Van Wy or Cam Salas or guys like that fulfill behind them the number of snaps that they'll be asked of? Because, I mean, what are the chances that Purnell and Austin Moore are, are super healthy and both will start all 12 games? Probably pretty slim. That's just the nature of the sport. So Cam Salas might need to do something. Rex Van Wy might need to do something. I'm probably forgetting someone. Uh, maybe Asa Newsom when he mm-hmm. comes back, obviously. Yeah. yeah, that's probably the one I'm forgetting. Asa. If he's healthy, he's probably ahead of both of those two that I, that I mentioned. It's interesting because as long as Alf Marenko is what they expect him to be, uh, the middle linebacker might be short of faster than the other spots because I think everyone would feel comfortable with Austin Romain as your number two. Yeah, and and Austin Moore brought up Alec Marenko with us today. Actually, we may have had two Alec Mar- Marenko shout outs. Oh, I thought you meant two Alec Marenkos. It's like, man, no, yeah. that'd be nice. Uh, it would be nice to have two of those they right start now. That cloning would, in veneer. Depth huh? would, uh, Could depth we clone would come every along. Johnson? Yeah. yeah uh, well, I would actually, uh, if you were asking me what I would do with the ability to clone Avery Johnson, I would do it in the fashion of, uh, you know, the clones and Attack of the Clones. Are when, we talking about Iowa State now? No, no, no. I don't want those clones attacking. When, uh, you know, they, they take Django Fett and they're like, oh, here you go. And you could stagger the age of the clone of Avery Johnson. So, yeah, you could get one that was like, you know, Boba's young. He, he wasn't built there, but the other guys were ready to go. So just anytime one Avery's gone, another one steps in. Is this in. Star Wars? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay. You lost. I don't, I don't do Star Wars. Oh, well, you should. You should think about it. No, so. no. I, I thought about it. Uh, nope, not doing it. All right. Well, the, then we'll end it on that one because uh, DUI doesn't want to talk Star Wars. And I think we're all probably pretty hungry. We're ready to get out and uh, see what. Oh, oh I, go ahead. Another takeaway. I, I kind of asked, I tried to, I think I asked everyone besides climbing because I knew what his answer would be. Like, obviously, you're playing a lot of new teams. Is there one you have circled on your schedule? No. It's like, oh, that's going to be a cool game or that's a game. Uh, so Avery said UT Martin because <laughs> that's game one. That's great, one. great uh, answer. I didn't even try to ask Climate, obviously. I asked uh, Adley Panther, and he mentioned Colorado because yeah. it's closer to home. Marcus Siegel Proximity. closed this Colorado. Uh, yeah, I didn't. Austin Moore, I think, said Colorado. And then, uh, let's see, who am I missing here? Brendan Mott. Brendan Mott said Colorado. Yeah, he said Colorado as well. <laughs> Marcus Siegel was a funny one. He's like, Colorado. Arizona, Kansas. <laughs> like he's just going through them all. I was like, man, well, that's I mean, game. he he and Avery Johnson essentially went down the same route then. Uh, Avery just said game game by game and, and, I, and, and I, the and other was hey, I'm going to list every game. That's what I, I'm looking forward to. And I don't mean this as a shot or an insult, but I also love when you ask Marquis Siegel and he's one of my favorite players, you guys know this. You ask him like who's staying out in the offense, who's staying out in the defense. He will go through the entire roster if you let him <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, get, give everybody the love, give everybody a shout out. Uh, so I will give everybody uh, a love and shout out uh, here. As we have jokingly said, we're getting ready to go to the on three big 12 media uh, party yeah, tonight. I, oh yeah. And I, I three man show. I keep thinking of funny things that Oh, keep going. I want to hear more. Funny so things. I, I don't know. Jordan Riley. We talk, started talking mm-hmm. about Jordan Riley. I think with Austin Moore, um, I got on the subject and it was, I don't know. I don't know. He's talking about. He's like he's gonna be really good. I was like, yeah, I like him. Another one of my mm-hmm. favorite players. I think I just love yeah. Kansas State. Did you tell him about how much you love Chris Tennant too? <laughs> I didn't, but I was like, I, I think I said Jordan Riley might be the only player older than you. Mm. I said that to Austin Moore, which I now that I think about, it, I was like, I'm lucky I didn't get punched. But he and then, but he said, no, I am the oldest. Yeah, player he made that clear to us too. <laughs> uh, real quick, did you think about asking Chris Kleiman, hey? Why didn't Chris Tennant get to come? Because all these other schools here got to bring specialists. So why are you no, hiding yes. my my man? Because Stan Weber came. That covers special teams. Because Stan's kids were great on special teams. <laughs> I think so. He just he, he, Stan reminds me of a guy that would coach special teams. Oh yeah, Stan has special teams <laughs> injury, in, in, energy. That's for sure. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, and I think he would take pride in that. 
I yeah. think, yeah, I think, and there's no reason not to take special Brian teams energy. Special. He needs to wear a shirt that says that special yeah. teams energy. Well, I'm going to guess, I mean, Landry Weber was great on special teams. Yeah. Stanton and Landry probably already have shirts that say something like that. <laughs> so they just hand them out at, at Weber family Christmas. Right, so. We really went on a rant. Yeah. Here. That's some, that's just some good K state fun there for you. All right. So for Drew Galloway, who was here moments ago and was an iron man with me today, talking to all these different people. RIP. Yeah, he's going to have to rest up. And for Derek Young, who just came in at the very end to, I don't know, be be the guy that got to walk off the mound and be at the bottom of the dog pile winning the World Series as opposed to, you know, being out there for the grind of the full game. Uh, I'm Mason Vo. Thanks for watching K-State Online. We'll be back here tomorrow. We'll see what what kind of fun we have since uh Maybe we get Coach Prime. Coach Prime on here, ask him what he oh, thinks. Oh, that would probably go over pretty well. Oh, yeah, he probably knows that we've talked about uh, it. Real quick. Dion, because you're not my coach and I'm calling you by your first name, uh, how do you feel being number one on the Fraud Watch power rankings? Oh, well, yeah, but but how much EA Sports loves you? What do you think about that? Mm, yeah, I've got questions about EA Sports uh, being that high on them, but we'll see. Maybe that's the investigative journalism tomorrow. We got to ask all the Colorado players what their ratings are when they're come back and like, well, I'm like a 77. We're like, how the heck is your team rated so high then? No, I don't Tra know. Travis Hunter has to be like 100, I think. We got good returns on K-State, though, in that department. Just They may have gotten some people fired based off of what Avery Johnson told us. So <laughs> it's not us. The three of us still have a job heading into tomorrow. Uh, so I feel good about that. You should, too. <laughs> you really get to control if we have a job tomorrow. I was going to say. So. That's good. Okay. All you're, right. You're, you're not fired. Oof. <laughs> Live to see another day, baby. All right. We'll be back tomorrow. See what uh, kind of Vegas fun we can get into tonight and uh, then whatever else we cobble together. And uh, let's go die in the heat.